Hey there, everybody. It's Salamander Day in Domina. And when you, and it is Salamander Day, and when you have finished the Jumi Jewel arc, you can come to the bar in Domina and play a little game with Shadow Zero. It's a little mini game. You uh, score points and you get little items that help with, like, tempering and stuff. We're going to play a game, and sure, we'll play a game. Explain the rules to us. Sounds easy enough. I see. And they're ba the points are based on powers of two, except for one. Just appeared as one. The points are called zero Bs for some reason. They're just points, though. There's nothing special about them. Catch them in a side roll. That's four. The punch is eight. Jump kick is 16. And the cheer pose is 32. We're going to try to find a couple cheers, but I don't profess to being super great at this game or anything. So we're just going to give one quick play just to show you how it kind of goes, and we're going to start. All right, let's do it to it. All right, I'm going to go around. Wow, that was a 16. Cool. Okay, I, I think that was a cheer. Yeah, nice. That was kind of an accident. Oh, I almost caught that one in a cheer. Oh, he was just standing there. That was no good. Crap, I got... Nah, crap. Yes, it gave me credit for the cheer. All right, that was quite a few points, actually. When they all jump up on the table like that, when they're all at the bar stools and everything, the game ends, I get 91 zero Bs. That gets me... Wow, that's not a bad prize, actually. That should be really good for tempering. Firestone and Earthstone. Cool. Well, uh, that's all for that. Just going to show it off the one time, and now we're going to go outside and play another game real quick that requires you to be on the world map. And this game is called Land Bopper. To do it, we're going to go to a place that has nine pieces of land. This is as good a place as any. You just stand there and you hold down the L1 button. And you press square to start Land Bopper, and it's basically just whack-a-mole with map artifacts. There are three stages. You uh, gain points whenever you hit one successfully, and you lose points whenever you whenever you miss one. And there's no real consequence to this game. You don't get items for it, unlike the Shadow Zero game. But we're just going to play three quick rounds of Land Bopper. First stage is very easy. <laughs> Doesn't take very quick reflexes or anything. <laughs> wow, that's not bad. I did a perfect stage one round of land bobber. That's not too bad. My concentration is really on today, but once it goes back to this, you can push start and go for stage two. And this is where it gets a little harder. It's a little faster now. See, I missed that one there. I lost a few points. They're going easy on me this time. It's, wow, there's a lot of same... Sp I'll never get to that one. Crap. But they were going easy on me there for at least a little while. And that's the end of stage two. Now, stage three, much tougher. We'll go ahead and default to the middle. Well, they're going a little easy on me. See, now it's just getting crazy. But not so crazy as to be unmanageable, apparently. Alright. Oh, I should probably stop while I'm ahead. Thousand points on Land Bomber. That's not too bad. Too bad it doesn't get you anything, but uh. Oh, there's stage four. I guess I did well enough to move on. Yeah. Now it's getting a little beyond me. Okay. This is probably where I'm going to be booting out. Wow, that was, <laughs> was kind of stupid. 
Okay, yeah, I guess I failed too many times, so now it kicked me out at stage four. I wonder how many stages there actually are to that. I'm not about to go ahead and test it. But there you go, two little Easter egg mini games that are fun to play. Now we're going to go off and we're going to look for the seven demi human pets. And we're going to start with the obvious one one that a mission, a whole event in the game revolved around, and that is uh, Tickle, the Sahagan. There are seven demi human pets in the game. And whether you get them or not, whether you're able to find them and locate them, depends on whether you have certain concentrations of mana in certain areas. In the desert, I believe you need Dryad level 3 to find Tickle and, of course, play the Wimpy Thugwing mission. And most of these guys, like most pets, these guys are not really worth taking around. Tickle himself is not that great. Uh, what is it? Yeah, he gives you, he makes your stabbing attacks more powerful, which is fine, I guess. Most of the demi-human pets give you a little boost on offense, but for the most part, they're not really worth taking around with you. And, uh, we're gonna go find the other six, uh, in short order. The next pet we're going to look for appears in the junkyard. He doesn't appear right away, but uh, there's at least one easy way to get to him that I know of. We're going to go ahead and use Psychokinesis to go to Louie's room, and that's going to put us a lot farther away. And then we're going to just go back to the beginning and hope the pet is standing there. Then I generally talk to this little horse right here. We're right near the uh, entrance to the place. We just have one more screen with a little moot fight. Talk to him, listen to his depressing little story. Then we're going to go left, and then left through the, uh, I think these are, yeah, some cursed dolls and a mad power. It shouldn't be too difficult. We'll just go ahead and power through it since this is the junkyard. Low level business. And once we get back to the entrance, we will see Fernando the Narcissus. There he is. He's a pet that can join us, and he has a synchro effect similar to the Sahagat Tickles. Wow, he's very upfront. How can you deny that? Yeah, he has, I think he, yeah, striking attacks give you, striking attacks become more powerful, yeah, kind of like, kind of similar to Tickle that way, so really, I'm not too interested in him. Really easy one to find is over here in Lumina. We're going to go over to the west past the Tavern Mischievous Spirit, and he'll be hanging around in the western section of Lumina with us. There he is right there, Guri the Goblin. <laughs> Alright, I guess that's cool if you want to do that. What does he give us as far as a synchro effect? Slashing, yeah, so he's in the, uh, he's in the Fernando Tickle family. I'm not too thrilled by him either. Number four is at Lake Kilma. It's a Mad Mauer named Captain Da Yang, and we're going to go past this fork. We're going to go to the fork that comes after this one, the first fork after this one. And there he is, just waiting to be taken in by us. There is Captain Da Yang. Well, how can I say no to that? I don't think he has a very good synchro effect either. Most of these demi human. Okay, he gives us better defense. Okay, woo. Okay, well, let's get out of here and abandon him and head on to Norn Peaks. This is one of the better ones, and he's right there at the beginning. Mambo the Tomato Man. That's quite a sales pitch you've got there, Mr. Mambo. I'll go ahead and take you. Mambo's synchro effect, as far as Demi Human Pets go, is one of the better ones. He adds Flame Burst to your attacks, which will basically catch enemies on fire and drain their energy faster, which is nice, I suppose. But uh, there's still one better than him. We're not going to get to him just, or her rather, just yet. But, uh, if you're going to take a Dimmy human pet, you can do far worse than Mambo the Tomato Man. Number six is in the jungle. He's a little bit deeper in than some of the other Dimmy human pets, but he's easy to get to. We're just going to take, we're not even going to take the Psychokinesis service. We're just going to go this way, go to the far right, and then we're going to make our way far left until we get to the western section, until it tells us we're in the western section. It should be just this next screen up right here. And across the way, we're going to find Chitto, the Chobin Hood. He's a great 
greatest moment around, and he doesn't take no for an answer. And uh, he has a really weird signal effect, which is that he adds power to your indirect attacks, which I guess is just not hitting a guy right in the face or whatever. Yeah. I'm not going to be taking him along with this, really. I'm not going to worry too much about him. Alright, now for the one demi-human pet that really matters. And if you want to take one with you, I recommend Alicia the Succubus, which is who we're going to track down now. Alright, here we are out at the Field of Innocence where the save statue is. All you need to go do is go down to the lower left one screen, and there she is, Alicia the Succubus. This is the one worth taking if you're going to take one. And she's pretty cool too. She's got that kind of... What's that vampire chick's name from Adventure Time? Marlene? It's not Marlene. I can't remember. I haven't watched it in a while. But you take her, and her synchro effect is HP Drain, as opposed to HP Recovery, which you have, but that'll affect her more than you. Uh, HP Drain absorbs the enemy's damage points, which, when you attack enemies, you'll also get their energy. Highly useful, and uh, if we were not already on the precipice of beating the game, I would go ahead and take her with me, but I'm not going to because we're about to beat the game and the game doesn't save your pets once you beat it and the game world resets and all that hunky-dory stuff. So that's all for the demi-human pets. I highly recommend taking Elysia around with you if you are in fact going to carry a pet around. It's like, she's pretty cool. And there, uh, there are some other pets that have some, that have some good synchro, <laughs> synchro effects. You're just going to run in circles with me? That sounds, that sounds fun. Let's run in circles in the snow for a little bit. But uh, down in the description, I'll, I'll recommend some other pets that actually have some decent synchro effects. There aren't many, and pets basically just kind of get in your way a lot of the time. And it's not worth leveling them up, because as I say, once you beat the game, uh, they're just going to go away and disappear like they never existed. But that's all for the Dimmy Human pets. Just a fun little thing I wanted to show off. And now we're going to uh, do some tempering recipes that are really useful over in our blacksmith workshop. Um, I'm pretty sure I said we were going to do a couple of tempering recipes, but that was a big fat lie. We're only going to do one. And it is a get-rich-quick scheme, a money maker. And money makers are really good for an introduction to tempering because I cannot pretend to be an expert on tempering. It's a insanely complicated process and I cannot even pretend like I know everything there is to know about it. So we're just going to do a recipe that's really easy, doesn't involve a whole lot of parts, and what parts it does require are very easy to acquire. In fact, we already have them in our inventory. And they're a good way to show you that yes, there is in fact quite an experience to be had from tempering, and that if you know how to do it, it can in fact qualitatively enhance your Legend of Mana experience. So we're going to go into the Dominus shop here, and we're going to show off some of our wares to Mark. We're going to sell an item, that being the wind cap. The wind cap is not worth very much at all. It's just a hat made out of cotton. It's worth four lucre right now, but we are going to take it and we're going to do some things to it that are going to make it substantially... Hey there, you conspicuous looking statue who looks like somebody I have encountered in the game thus far. Is there a bob in the corner over there? I'm getting way off track. We're going to go out and we're going to make this wind cap worth quite a bit more money. When we bring it back, we are going to have a substantially more valuable item on our hands. So, watch as we go to our workshop and work some magic on something as simple as a wind cap. Now normally what you would use tempering for is something like making an infinity plus one sword or like a super powerful weapon, but that's a process that takes time and money. And if you have all the money you need, then it doesn't matter. You can just fool around with the tempering process and probably just kind of figure it out by brute force if you want, because if you got the money, then you've probably got the inclination too. So making money is important. It's also important in the making of golems, which can cost several hundred thousands of lucre even millions if you get way into it. So yeah, tempering weapons, especially making super powerful weapons, cost a lot of money. So here's a good trick for that. We're going to take our wind cap here. I've got a bunch of dragon bones from something, I don't know what. And I'm going to 
swear I'm gonna go from the bottom of the list, because this is faster. I'm gonna find my clear feathers. I should have a bunch of those. Yeah, I have 16, so I can do this trick four times, actually, because I'm gonna need four clear feathers for this. And feathers are a secondary material. Those things that we've been finding throughout the game in treasure chests, like ears of wheat and rust and virgin size and rotten meat, we've all had a good larf about that, and we've all been making fun of it. But I hope I've been careful not to say that that stuff is useless, because it's not. This is where it comes in handy. All those little things, those trinkets and doodads and goo that seem like garbage, they all have secondary abilities that come out. They are all imbued with some kind of magical essence that that manifests itself when you temper them into primary materials like weapons and armor. That's just the very basic gist of it. We're not seeing this happen. It's happening even right now as we're adding the first queer feather. We're just not seeing it manifested yet, but it is happening already. We're gonna go ahead and see now our wind cap has zero defense. It's completely useless as a piece of armor now. But that doesn't matter because we're going to go ahead and we're going to keep on adding clear feathers until we added four of them. Now see the screen raises a little and we get a magical card out of the clear feather. And that Lord of Flies is the magical essence which is inside the clear feather which is affecting the properties of the wind cap. I hope I'm getting that right. I'm trying to explain very basically what's happening here. Just so I can actually tell you that something is happening and I'm not just doing a trick by the book. But this, uh, I guess, this Lord of Flies thing is something that's going to make us... It somehow affects the... I'm hazarding a guess here because like I say, I don't really know very much about this. But I'm hazarding a guess in saying that that Lord of Flies property that's coming out of the Clear Feather is somehow making this wind cap. I don't know if it works across items or not, but I'm guessing that that Lord of Flies property is what's making this wind cap more valuable. And now we filled it with four clear feathers. So we are done with our altering right now. And like I said, this is a very simple process. To make very powerful weapons, you sometimes end up adding as many as 50 secondary materials to a weapon, which again, gets very expensive because a lot of them are things like crystals and stones that you buy in the Bejeweled City and and uh, and the instrument coins that you get from when you see elementals out in like, the battle areas and you can play music to catch them, you get coins from that. And those are often used in weapon tempering. I'm eliding over a lot of this, but just showing you a very basic recipe to sh right now to show you that there is merit to be found in the tempering process. And now we're going to go and sell that wind cap that we've altered. So now let's take that same wind cap that was worth four lucre before, let's take it back to the shop now that it's been tempered with four clear feathers, and let's go ahead and sell it back. It's now worth over 26, almost 27,000 lucre. Easy money making trick, and the reason it's so easy is because the materials that you need for it are not rare at all. You can find wind caps and clear feathers, in fact both of those you can find on Luan Highway, so you can actually do this trick really early in the game after you get a blacksmithy and everything. It's a good way to make money early on, it's a good way to make money later in the game when you start spending gobs of money on tempering and golems, and all that good stuff. So with that, we are done with all the supplemental stuff at last. Now, tomorrow, we are going to move on to the final mission of the game, which is going to take place at the Tree of Mana, and we're going to finally wrap this whole thing up once and for all in a nice little package with a big red bow. I'll see you guys at the Mana Tree tomorrow.